family cut down some trees that were shading his garden and that equals a lot more limbs and sticks that need to be burned now so since I guess I have the best location for a burning pile <laughs> I have another burning pile in fact I have two so we just started this one hopefully it'll keep going I tried to be a good Girl Scout and make the fire for the uh, go the first time I lit it so hopefully when the cardboard and the little twigs that I threw in there that were kind of dry get burning that it will be enough to start the pile and then when that one is done we will add this one to it <laughs> yay so this is the burning pile part two still going So there's the first pile that I tried to get it going. Since the branches and limbs are pretty green, it was hard to get that fire going. I have a nice little campfire in the middle of that pile of green limbs, but it wasn't hot enough to catch the whole pile on fire. So my son came to the rescue and voila, we got this one started. We had to throw all kinds of old bad lumber that we have into that and some really dry logs from the wood pile, the driest we have, to get that started. And now it is a blazing inferno. Yay! the fire almost burned clear down but man is it ever hot I'm standing like about six feet away from it and yeah 
too hot. So now we're cleaning up my son's garden area. That the garden that needs more sun, and that's why we have these limbs cut down. These are some of the twigs right here. I'll just bring them over by the wheelbarrow full and toss them in the embers of the fire. That ash bed is about, uh, I'd say, 12, 12 or so feet long and maybe 10 feet wide going the other way. Yeah, that was a lot of, a lot of limbs. And then we still have a few over here on this perimeter that we need to toss in and get everything raked up around here. That little pile of ashes over there is where I started that first fire in that other pile. And it never did take off burning the pile. We had to get a fire that was hot enough that it was relentless and that those green limbs and branches and twigs had to um, had to succumb to the fire. They had no other choice but to but to burn and uh, it's good to have this mess cleaned up. So what I'm going to do now is just a little bit at a time grab these twigs from the garden area where the trees fell and I'm going to toss those in those embers and get all that cleaned up. So it's been a big uh, burning pile day today. There's that wheelbarrow full of twigs burning. After that last little video showing you the wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow. I put my phone away and oh boy the back of my phone was hot even though I was standing far away from the fire it's, it's a hot fire this is how the fire looks now after several wheelbarrow folds of twigs the garden area is all cleaned out now of twigs and since those trees were right near a fence line between the garden and the chicken run then um, of course several of the branches uh, from the trees when when my son cut them they fell on the chicken run side so there were not only twigs in the garden area but several twigs in the chicken run area and so almost all of those twigs have now been put here in the burning pile I think my granddaughter said there's one more load maybe two so after that then we keep watching the fire until it's too dark and since it gets dark early now, darn it, it may be dark before this fire is done. I might have to douse it before it's actually done. Hope not. You can probably tell that it's starting to get dark because of the way we can see the embers in the pile of ashes. So, it's probably... Oh, time for me to go gather my eggs, <laughs> which is usually around dinner time. I did finally go in the house and get a drink of soda. Treated myself to a soda pop. My goodness, I think it was a drag strip along here, the way the cars are so noisy. Well anyway, there's the big ash pile from 
the second burning pile episode and I hope we don't have to have another one of these until next spring. Here's one more shot of the interesting embers. Okay, one more shot. I just raked over the surface of the ashes. And all the little embers popped out and said, look at me. Well, time to turn on the hose and get in the house. Good morning, everyone. It's a couple of days later um, from when we had the fire, and uh, it was a big job. And I'm glad that we got that taken care of. It was also good to have a rest afterward. And, uh, but yes, it was a good job to get behind us. It's a good thing to have done. The garden is now looking good. Logs have been cut. Logs have been split. Logs have been carried to the wood pile. And uh, things are getting back into shape and so that's good. Now we have a great big pile of ashes out there where the burning pile was. And like I mentioned before, we don't normally put ashes in with our compost or spread it on our garden because our soil here is already alkaline. So, but there are things that we can do with ashes. I was watching another YouTube channel, and this was months ago. It's called Homestead How. And they give you a lot of great ideas on how they're learning things for their homestead. And the video that I watched, one of them, I've watched several of them, <clears throat> uh, but this particular one was different uses of ashes. And so you could go onto YouTube which is where you are right now, <laughs> but you could go over to Homestead Howe and Carrie and Jen will teach you a lot of things. They'll teach you uh, how, for, for one thing, to use the ashes. Um, they have wood burning stoves and so they always have ashes from their fires that they use to heat their home. And here's some of the things um, that they listed that I thought were interesting, and so I'm just gonna give you a few of them. Fireplace ash can be used, um, you can make a paste with it, and you can actually use it to clean the glass door front, if you have a glass door front, on your fireplace. It will keep it clean for you. And then also, um, same idea, making a paste out of it and using it to clean your glass top stove. There's a couple more down on the list um, that if you make a paste out of it, you know, mix it with water, like a grill cleaner is one. And I think there was one more. Yeah, silverware. You can clean your silverware, yay! Um, if you sprinkle it on your chicken feed, you get 1% more eggs. So I don't know who figured that out. 
You can use it like soda in your refrigerator and it will help take odors out. You can actually use it for deodorant also. That sounds fun. And when you make a paste out of it, you can use it for toothpaste. So there must be something in ashes that help to clean and polish surfaces. Anyway, all of those things are interesting, I think. And of course you can add it to your soil. If you have acidic soil, it will help to make your soil out more alkaline. You can add it to your compost for the same reason. If you have slugs around your plants, you can sprinkle it around your plants and the slugs don't like it. Chickens do like it. If you toss a little bit out in their run, um, they will use it for a dirt bath. They'll mix it in with the dirt and use it to bathe in. It can be used for flea dust for animals. You can use it to deodorize your chicken coop, deodorize your litter box for your cats, um, deodorize yourself if you get sprayed by a skunk. That's a good thing to know. Um, you can derive lye from it and make it in uh, make soap out of with the lye that you get from the ash. Um, ashes will repel mice, which is something that I'm going to incorporate with that in my chicken coop because my cats aren't doing a very good job right now. It repels moths. You can use it for a dry shampoo if you're really desperate. You can use it for wound care. It speeds clotting. Interesting. You can use it for a deodorant. You can use it to distinguish a fire. Interesting. You can put it on oil spills and it will help absorb and clean those up. You can put it on an anthill and it will make them relocate. You can use it for ice melt. You can use it for traction for tires in the snow. So you might want to keep some in your car. <laughs> anyway, those are some of the ideas. And like I said, go to Homestead Howe on YouTube and uh, get the whole video on that. Um, yeah, that, I'm gonna use some of those ashes. I have a huge pile of ashes, which you just saw. And I'm going to use some of those for some of these purposes. So remember to, if you learned anything new today or reminded of things that you already knew before, um, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, share with your friends, make a comment. And remember that even when you take it slow, you can accomplish a lot.